Okay, here's a quick look at JGLES2, uh, which is available on uh, GitHub. It's basically uh, a very lightweight, very thin uh, layer of uh, uh, EGL or GLES2 to uh, let you use GLES2 um, uh, from Java. Um, just a quick test here. Um, as you would expect with uh, EGL, um, you start off with the uh, uh, attributes um, that you want for uh, your uh, display. Now, you'll put them into uh, <coughs> in integer buffers uh, initially, just so that um, the um, uh, JNI uh, library can access them easily. Um, everything's pretty much uh, as you'd expect it uh, in C, so um, you get a handle to the native display, uh, which gets you a, 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 an EGL display handle. You can initialize EGL um, just for the sake of testing. I've uh, also uh, pulled out a few query strings so you can see uh, the EGL version, the vendor extensions, etc. Because EGL uh, tends to throw things back um, uh, um, in um, uh, by modifying uh, memory that, uh, uh, that you supply, uh, giving it pointers, I'm basically using a, a single integer buffer uh, just to get single values back. Um, normally, you probably wouldn't go for looking at 32 uh, configs, but I did just testing basically to see what uh, different uh, configs normally you just choose the first config it comes up with and that's uh, usually quite fine and hand dandy mm -hmm. so you will need EGL choose conflict uh, config um, giving it the attribute uh, buffer uh, it returns the config buffer uh, which is an array of uh, config pointers um, also um, uh, tells you, uh, you, you tell it what size the um, uh, maximum s uh, size of the array is that you've uh, um, set aside for the configs and it returns uh, how many actual uh, configs it, it's found so getting uh, back out of the single uh, integer buffer the number of configs found then looping through each config um, each pointer at a time um, and then getting again just for testing we're just getting some attributes uh, from each config and uh, dumping them to the uh, console um, as, as the handle for the uh, configuration that we're using and uh, just choosing uh, the, the first config it picks um, now uh, uh, I've also provided a utilities class which does some things outside the scope of EGL such as for instance uh, making a na native window and some matrix handling and stuff like that uh, um, <coughs> uh, later on there'll be um, a keyboard and um, you know, uh, various uh, event handling uh, uh, utilities so from uh, once we've picked a, a config, we can then um, actually create a, a e EGL context. Uh, again, for testing purposes, I've just queried uh, uh, something to do with the uh, context. Uh, having got the context, we can then uh, create a windowed surface. Uh, again, for testing, I'm just pulling out um, uh, various uh, bits of information uh, from the uh, uh, surface that's been returned. Um, make the context current. Um, oh, and uh, finally we get to use GLES2. I'm just getting some um, query strings out of it, like the renderer, the version, the vendor. Uh, setting the clear colour. Uh, again, this is all very much like, like you do it uh, in C. Here we've got um, a shader um, for the fragment, and it's basically um, there's um, uh, varying, so each uh, individual 
uh, vector has its own uh, color. Um, on this one here, the uh, the pos is the position of each vector, and the model view project projection uh, matrix that we're calculating, so that we can um, <coughs> reposition the uh, uh, vertices uh, within the uh, view. Um, Compiling each of the two shaders, and there's um, the ability if something goes wrong, you can actually get a, a shader log, which is uh, basically invaluable. Finally, um, uh, create the actual uh, program by attaching the shaders to it. Again, if something goes wrong with that, then you get another log, which can be useful. Finally, we're using that program attaching the attributes to it, so uh, the attribute for the position and the attribute for the uh, colour uh, linking together. Uh, the uniform uh, is the model view um, uh, projection matrix. Um, oh, and then just finally again for testing we're just printing out the uh, indexes that we've got um, and the node real practical use for other uh, than just uh, uh, telling uh, which uh, buffers uh, are linked to which attributes. Um, we don't actually need to sort of do anything with those values uh, other than uh, supply them to GLES2. Uh, set the viewport up. There's uh, a single uh, triangle vertices, uh, three verts, and uh, three different colours. create buffers for them again. Um, now um, I'm using CASMATH um, uh, for the matrix mathematics. I was going to use a Java um, uh, uh, matrix maths uh, library but then I've used CASMATH before with GLES2 and OpenGL and it's just a superb fit. It's just really nice. Uh, so I thought I might as well use it again with this. So again very very light layer uh, in the utilities class just to um, you basically end up using it just like you would in C. Uh, so we've got an I vector, a center vector, I the uh, center that the view is looking at, uh, and a, an up vector. Um, we create a matrix, a view matrix from the uh, these three uh, vectors. Um, then we create a perspective projection uh, uh, matrix. Combine these two together, multiply them together to make the VP uh, matrix, um, because those two normally, uh, unless the projection uh, uh, matrix changes, you you just uh, need together. Um, obviously, if the uh, window changed its size, then you'd have to recalculate the VP um, matrix. Um, well, model. Um, matrix which is basically the position and rotation of the uh, overall model um, and also a model view projection matrix which is the uh, all those matrices combined together which will um, be sent to the shader. So I set the model um, uh, matrix to identity, give it a translation so it's uh, actually in the scene and I'm uh, moving it about uh, varying its position um, uh, with each frame and I'm also uh, changing the rotation of the object, multiplying, uh, once we've got this final uh, model matrix, I'm multiplying it with the view projection uh, matrix to make the final model view projection matrix. Send that uh, to the shader, uh, clear the buffers, then uh, Again, it's all just exactly like you'd uh, use it in C. I set up the attribute pointers, uh, enable um, the uh, attribute arrays, uh, draw the triangle, uh, swap the buffers, wait for a bit so you can see it, and uh, wash and repeat uh, on, on to the next frame. Um, and that's uh, basically it. So let's uh, just see it running. The uh, the ant actually Bill James and um, 
uh, as, as well as compiles the uh, uh, Java uh, parts of it as well. So looking uh, back over the uh, uh, output of, of the test, you see that it's uh, spewing out various uh, um, bits of information um, that it's interrogated from uh, uh, EGL and uh, GLES. Um, and uh, yeah, finally you uh, you get your triangle. Yeehaw. And that's about it. Uh, just to remind you, it's available on GitHub under the name of JGLES2. Uh, very early days yet. Uh, you can only do very basic things and there's lots yet still to find. Uh, but it's definitely getting there. Thanks for watching.